Hello YouTube and welcome back to the African Allure Outdoors. It is 12 o'clock on Wednesday the 9th of December. Uh, it's a pretty hot day. We're expecting some rain here. I know the lighting's not very good at, on me at the moment, but it's just one of those things. Thank you for joining us today. Today I would like to introduce you to a walk and stalk method that I use for getting close to animals. It's called boot, scoot and shoot. <laughs> It's not a new method by any means. It's a, it's a method that's been around for s some time. It's, it's used by a lot of rifle guys, but I think it's very applicable for bow hunting as well. I think if you um, have a look at a lot of YouTube uh, videos and stuff, you'll see guys crawling around on their hands, their knees and their feet. And um, you'll see that they're putting their bow or their rifle into the sand. Or into other gunk and the problem with that I feel is is that those are all moving parts and one has got to be careful of moving parts and sand in particular and if you take a bowstring like so you know a bowstring is a, is a woven string or it's a spun string so there's a whole lot of strands that are together and it's wound up and it's put under tension and uh, the minute you start getting sand into those strings and you start putting tension on it, especially when you pull a bow. As, as you pull it, that string is going to sort of wrap, those strands are going to wrap around one another and you're going to get friction. And if you've got sharp grains of sand there, it's just going to create wear and tear basically. And uh, then if it gets into your cam bearings and that sort of thing, it, it just becomes like grinding paste. For me, I like this method of walk and stalk, um, this, this uh, boot, scoot and shoot and uh, there's a couple of reasons and I want to explain the couple of reasons for me one is that you're putting your feet first so if you're gonna bump something like a snake it's gonna bite you on your foot rather than on your head you know when you're also down on your hands and knees you find that there's an intense amount of pressure on your knees your your hands your shoulders and uh, also if you think about typical predators in Africa your predators walk on their basically on fours with a very parallel back to the ground you know and that to an animal is a big warning sign he's saying oh shucks here comes danger you know I must be careful of this so um, this boots scoot and shoot when you come up from being on your hands and knees into a shooting position there is a lot of movement in in coming up off the ground and then having to pull your bow Whereas if, if you're in this position that I'm explaining now, all you've literally got to do is you've just got to fold your legs under you and uh, you, you're pretty much ready to go. The other thing as well is that if you're using a wrist release, when you're doing this boot, scoot and shoot, is you turn the wrist release that it's around on the top of your hands. Um, a couple of things that you do need to remember is, is that you will need probably a good pair of uh, gloves for your hands especially if you're operating in an area like, such as behind me where there is an insane amount of thorns um, the other thing that you want to might reinforce is also your shorts or uh, your 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 pants section of your your pants you know the the butt section of your pants um, one it's probably a good thing if there's thorns around two if you're uh, you, you know if there's some serious predators around <laughs> maybe you need to carry a spare set of shorts with you as well who knows but anyway um, this method can also be used uh, with a rifle um, it's a quite a nice way to keep your rifle out of the dirt and the gunk as well and quite often uh, you know if you're hunting with a professional hunter or a professional guide then uh, you guys can move in a caterpillar like pattern and like I said, it keeps your profile really low down. The animals are not really too sure what to make of you because the you don't have the spine that's parallel to the ground, you know. You're a little bit more like a baboon. Well, in Africa, that is. I don't know what it would be like in the northern hemisphere. But you're not so much of a threat to them. I think the other thing as well is that you must also remember that with your binoculars, you're inclined to keep binoculars around your chest area here. Um, as well as a range find or that sort of thing now if you are on your hands and knees everything is hanging upside down and to get to the binoculars you've got to basically 
you've got to go back on your haunches and you've got to bring up your binoculars and you've got to look at what you are hunting or what you're wanting to look at. So those are a couple of important things. Whereas if you're on this um, boot scoot and shoot, then you're on your butt and everything's here on your chest. I'm going to um, demonstrate to you how this works. Um, this is a cursive bow. This is a Matthews um, Pro Genesis. Um, it's actually my son's bow when he's a little bit older. But I just brought it out just for simplicity because it's one of those bows that is incredibly easy to draw. Um, and uh, I've, just got, I've just brought an arrow with here as well just for a little bit of fun. You know, it's, it's horribly short for me. Remember that I'm a 32 inch draw length and this this bow I think is is only about 20 28 inches I think I, I'm actually not too sure on the on the spec but it is a fun bow to shoot so it's horribly too short for me but oh that was a bullseye what do you know hey eh? so anyway so here's the boot scoot and shoot into a kneeling position if you need to and you're all there keep your butt on the ground keep yourself down low i think the other thing as well is is that if you do encounter something where you've got an animal that's staring at you it's much easier for you to just put out your legs and gently roll back into position and your bow and your gun are still kept out of the dirt and sand and you can also still use your binoculars and you can still look in a lying position while the animals try and figure what, out what you are. You will also often find that when you make your, your profile quite low that you'll have some animals that will sort of come up and they will want to see what you are because they're not sure what is going on. So, so I think one of the key factors to remember is that in a normal hunting situation you'd have a broad head and keeping it up keeps the blade from coming into contact with dirt and grass and all that sort of stuff. As I say, you must remember that you'll have your binoculars and your rangefinder. In terms of shooting, it should be easy enough to draw from a seating position and shoot. Or you can also, you know, at that time, maybe just roll up Anyway folks, remember to please like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your views and uh, I hope we do some hunting soon. Just to demonstrate with you the rifle. This is my 416 high tech rifle here. Open sights. This is what we put elephants down with in Africa. Same principle. Rifle on your lap. Keeping it out of the dirt and the sand. And gently just moving forward remember I said to you that uh, if you need to lie down it's easy enough you can lie down you can also prepare yourself come up into a shooting position and you are there ready to shoot so all good So with a little bit of practice, you'll probably get it right. Anyway folks, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We bring you more.